So that takes us over to the world title scene in which there's no world title match this month because Jarrett and Rhino are running roughshod over everybody. They are the, the rough riders. <laughs> July 22nd, in fact, Raven's here. <laughs> Raven's here. <laughs> Raven is here. He's always hanging around. Mike Tanae puts over the internet reviews of No Surrender. That's us. Which is funny to see them, like, again, they call Daniels and Aries an internet dream match. And, like, this is the era of wrestling where if the word internet fan is said on television, it's always said in, like, a derisive sense. Yeah. It's like, oh, the internet fan. The IWC. Yeah, here they're like embracing it. It's like my is like the internet reviews were great. We are doing the internet dream match. We're allowing the internet to vote on what that match should be. It's kind of like an open embrace of the internet as opposed to running away. Well, from people it. always love the internet when they're on their side. <laughs> no, one, yeah, no one ever does the wrestling is subjective rant when somebody says you have a good match. Yeah, exactly. No one's ever like, no, you don't know shit. You don't know whether that match was good. Don't you compliment me? Oh, how many bumps have you taken? <laughs> Uh, Raven does a promo. He says, plans are like tyrants. The simpler they are, the easier they are to execute. Makes sense. He beat Abyss at the pay-per-view, but then Jared showed up to steal his thunder. TNA isn't big enough for the both of them. Jared interrupts. He says, Raven has no friends and should be fired. <laughs> I think because of having no friends. Yeah. And I, I thought it was really interesting after, like, the Cassidy Riley stuff, too. Yeah, I love the idea that they're like, you have no friends. And Raven's like, I do have no friends. And Cassidy Riley's like, I'm fucking right here. <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy Riley should have been on the stage with him when he said it. Yeah. And Raven still should have been like, yeah, I don't have any friends. Uh, Raven said the only when he's done with Jarrett, the only thing he'll be qualified for is an autopsy. Rhino tries to gore Raven. Raven dodges. Raven goes to deal with Jarrett, but then turns into a gore. Two on one attack. Jarrett locks Raven in the figure four as they stress that Raven does in fact have no friend. <laughs> Fuck you, Cassidy. Speaking of, in the classic match that is going to be interrupted, it's Cassidy Riley versus Mikey Bats on the July 29th Impact. I was watching this and I was like, oh, cool, Cassidy Riley's gonna get like a win. <laughs> Whereas, if you see the first thing I wrote in the notes, oh, these guys are definitely getting jumped. <laughs> Like, Riley is, like, full-on dressed like Raven now. He's gone into, like, Raven cosplay because he loves Raven. He's, but they're not friends. Yeah, Rhino shows up, gores bats, gores Riley, pile drives bats, absolutely fucking kills him. <laughs> you know, sometimes, like, because they call Rhino's pile driver the Rhino driver. And there's times where I'd be like, fuck you, it's a pile driver. But then he does it so good, it's like, you know what? You deserve to call it the Rhino driver. You get to name it something. Yeah, Raven comes out, makes the save. Raven mulls over the fact that this is a tag team situation and he is at a two-on-one disadvantage. Because he admits he, in fact, has no friends. And that's when CM Punk comes out. <laughs> Look in your eyes. The funny thing is, it was meant to be Terry Funk. Oh, that would be fun. Uh, the original main event was meant to be Terry Funk and Raven, but this did coincide with Funk's wedding anniversary, so we turned down the booking. Like, I like the tag, but the idea of Raven and Terry Funk teaming would just sit so much sicker. <laughs> you did get it in the Asylum days, if you remember, but it was like a four-minute match and it was nothing. Against... Yeah, I want more Funk. Yeah, against Julio and Punk. So who cares? <laughs> Aww. But Raven delivers the great line, sometimes when you have no friends, an enemy will do. Lights out, Sabu. And it's like, but why though? Why is Sabu helping? Because they gained respect for each other when they feuded last when year. When he hung the, the dummy of his uncle. You're like, you know what? You were willing to go to extremes. When he murdered Sanjay Dutt, he was like, you know what, Raven? I can vibe with you. It is funny that they don't really explain it. They're just like, let just go with it. And I'm kind of okay to just go with it, but they're just like, just go with it. AEW superstar Sabu here. Fucking still mad that they had Sabu. They had him as they a surprise. And they didn't lights out. This company loves doing lights out more than any company in existence. Also, Tony's a fucking ECW dork. Yeah, it's Tony's favorite thing in the world to do Lights Out Surprises. And you have Sabu, Mr. Lights Out Surprise, and you don't do it. It's bullshit. Even if you're worried about, like, how long you'd have to leave the lights out because he's not the most mobile man these days, you could, like, sneak him down to ringside or something and then have him go from there. Yeah, you know, Sabu, not a not a noticeable fella. But he, he was wearing, like, a suit and stuff. You could have put, like, a mask on him and nobody would have known who he was. Still, I'm still mad about that. Lights out. Put, could have put him on a trolley and trolleyed him down and then took the trolley away. <laughs> there is something magical about it actually being a lights out Sabu, though. 
It's just, it's just yeah, special. It's just right. Uh, Sabu runs wild. It's a moonsault on Rhino, as it will be Raven and Sabu versus Jared and Rhino at the pay-per-view. Why not? Sabu was telling people in the dressing room the reason he came in, claiming WWE was trying to get him as late as the night before his TNA debut, was because he said in the end Vince McMahon doesn't respect his style and what he's done, and he didn't want to work for him. He also noted all the work Scott Demore did by arranging the benefit show BCW did last year when he was broke and uh, out injured because of the steroid shot infection thing that put him out. We talked about that uh, last year when he, he disappeared mm-hmm. from TNA during the, the Raven feud that never got properly paid off. It's getting paid off right here. Yeah, as Raven's partner. <laughs> Raven's like, you can be my partner because I beat you technically because you ran away. <laughs> mm. August 5th Impact, we started with a, a recap. Also, Franchise had Cassidy Riley, and he's still smitten with Raven because Raven technically saved him again last week. Because <laughs> the whole thing is Franchise is like, he broke your fingers, he doesn't care about you. And uh, Cassidy Riley's like, Franchise, did you not see last week? He came out and he's helped like- me. He watched Mikey Bats get pile-driven and he was fine. But when I was being pile-driven, he saved me. <laughs> he's that's sad he's not teaming with Raven at the pay-per-view, but Sabu is a good pick too. And then he's like, I'm going to go wait in line. And Franchise is like, this show is still a week and a half away. What are you doing? It's like, no, i, I got to get there early. <laughs> I've got to go wait in line. This is the most interesting Cassidy Riley has ever been. <laughs> Better than the early Hot Shots era. I also mean just in his real life. Mm, just taking on Raven's personality. Yeah. Main event of that episode, Raven and Sabu did a quick TV squash against Simon Diamond and David Young. <laughs> that is the natural reaction to David Young. I fucking hated that match so much. Why? Oh, as soon as I saw it, I, my eyes glazed over and my brain turned off and I was like, fuck you. You just don't want to see Simon Diamond and David Young? No, it was after an Apollo match. <laughs> Uh, today referred to Young as a diamond in the rough here, setting the, the, the name for their stable. It's a great name. Raven DDT followed by Sabu Arabian Face Buster for the win. Jarrett and Rhino attack as we end on a brawl. And then main event of the last Impact of the Month. A real cool little main event. Rhino versus Chris Sabin. I don't remember. They, like, Rhino was remarkably generous with Chris Sabin here. I need to go back and rewatch this because I really don't remember anything about it, but it sounds so cool. <laughs> yeah, because, like, Rhino gave him a ton, Sabin fired up. There's a story about how Rhino was telling people he was such a big a fan of Sabin that he wanted him to kick out of the gore. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this guy, this guy's got it. He should kick out of the gore. <laughs> This is Rhino's TNA debut. And he's like, what if this yeah. guy kicked out of the gore? I, well, like, doesn't, isn't Rhino, like, tangentially related with Demore too? He's a demore like, guy, yeah. Which is part of the yeah, reason so he, like, he went it, to TNA. You know, you know he's, he's doing it, 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 it's his boy's boy, so he probably is, like, close to him, at least, in some manner. Mm. Uh, Rhino already is his longtime TNA theme here, by the way, the, the, the famous Digimon theme. Uh Shout out to the one guy who was like, I can kind of hear the bass line. That you got more support than I expected because there was like two or three who was like, they're not the same, but I can kind of hear it. There's like a vibe to it. And I'm not saying it's the whole song. There's just a specific part of the song that always triggers my brain with it. Mm. It did have a slower intro here, though, because it usually got into the dirt, 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 pretty quick. Whereas it's like bum, Digimon, bum, 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 Yeah. Then Rano digivolves. We we talked about this. He digivolves into. I think we decided on Wardlow. Rhino Greymon. Uh, Skull Rhino Mon. Oh, that's sick. They cut the, the shot of the tunnel of Chris Saban's entrance slightly too early, and Saban was just getting cued. You could see him getting cued to go out. It's like, oh, you silly gooses. <laughs> you silly gooses. Yeah. Don Castle on the pod. <laughs> Interesting that Rhino is still the man beast, by the way. He is not yet the war machine. Are you a man beast guy or a war machine guy? As of my deep loyalty to TNA, I am a war machine guy. Wow. Are you Rhino with an I or Rhino with a Y guy? <laughs> As my deep loyalty to TNA, I'm a rhino with an eye guy. <laughs> that's, that's the wrong answer, and you know that. It is funny. It, it, just, it almost sounded weird to hear him called, like, the, the man beast here in TNA. Yeah. He's, Rhino's the coolest. He's so jacked at this stage as well. Like, he's just... When, when Rhino is on, he's so sick. <laughs> you should go back and watch this match, then. This match is great. I'm going to. Because it, it, it's like a mini version of the Joe match in some ways, except with Rhino. Yeah. Uh, Tanae mentions that Rhino has gored JBL, RBD, Edge, and Raven in recent months. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, but very back and forth match. Saban gets some near falls, but Rhino closes it with a spine buster and a gore. Raven shows up, brawls with Rhino. Jarrett comes out and distracts Raven long enough for Rhino hit the gore. Lights out. Sabu. 
Yeah. Uh, Sabu goes for a top rope Rana through a table. Rhino counters into a power bomb onto a table that didn't break because <laughs> tables never cooperate. Then Rhino power bombs Sabu through the table as Jared applied a figure four to Raven to close the show. I read that the wrong way around. I was like, yeah, I remember when Sabu put Jared in the figure four to close the show. <laughs> The famous submission match. I suppose he does the the camel clutch. So Sabu does have a submission. Mm, they should do a submission match. Which does bring us to Sacrifice, in which they did announce that there's a stipulation added to the main event. They announced this on the pre-show. That if Raven pins Jarrett in the main event, then Jarrett can't get another title shot for a year. But if Jarrett pins Raven, he'll get the next title shot. But what would happen if any of the other people were involved? It's a good question. One that Larry Zabisco did not think through. Main event of the show, the tag team match match of Rhino and Jeff Jarrett versus Raven and Sabu. Yeah. They'd already given up on the slow intro of the Rhino theme. They've already sped it up for the pay-per-view. <laughs> I don't think it's the first time he's had it. I think he's had it before, but I always appreciate when he does. Jarrett had his fireworks guitar. It's the best. Did he have it at double or nothing? Oh, I didn't pay enough attention to his entrance. This, that's the most unsatisfying answer you could have given me. <laughs> well, he comes out to the mashup theme and I immediately want to die. <laughs> you could play My World and you play this fake My World song instead and I get very upset at it. I did suggest that uh, they should put Jarrett in Anarchy in the Arena so they can spend the first five minutes brawling over my world. Awesome. J Raven cuts Jarrett with a pizza cutter. Jarrett gets heavy color very quickly. He knows what he's what, what we're here to do. Yeah. Do you think this is like Jeff Jarrett bit like <laughs> ECW jealousy? <laughs> he's like, I gotta do it. <laughs> yeah, he's in the Rhino, Raven, and Sabu. He's like, look, guys, I can bleed too. I can hang with the uh, ECW guys, guys. I'm extreme. I can do plunder brawls uh, it is funny like this match isn't no dq or anything but they just kind of wrestle it as if, as if it is because <laughs> there is chair is fucked into so many heads during this match <laughs> there's so many chairs thrown into so many heads it happens like 15 i like times. how that's like an accepted form of a headshot now uh there's one jericho takes on the paper sorry to do mild double or nothing spoilers on you <gasps> But it only hits him in like mostly in the shoulder, and I'm always like, that's that's not a proper Sabu moment. <laughs> a certified Sabu moment. Yeah, I need someone to hit right in the face with it to be a proper. And, and it's the best when you don't see it coming. There's just like a chair comes flying out of nowhere and hits somebody in the face. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, an actual certified Sabu moment guy is Nick Jackson. He loves himself some Sabu. He loves to do the chair throw. The, the best chair throw since Sabu, probably. Well, when you think about it, both of them were in TNA in 2010, and that's where he learned it. Mm. Like, Nick snipes people with them. It's crazy. <laughs> His accuracy. 360 no-scope chair shot. Yeah, he sh maybe he did that in Anaki in the arena. He might have. I was talking about how like it, it, it was destiny that we'd start this the second that match started, and it was more or less the case. Yeah. He got like five minutes of it. It's fine. Uh, Sabu was going for his triple jump moonsault, but Rhino just grabbed his leg and he fell face first on a chair, which made me laugh. Certified Sabu moment. <laughs> Raven, it's the Raven effect, but Jared pulls the referee out. Jared goes for a guitar shot, but Cassidy Riley runs in and steals the guitar. He has another friend. <laughs> Jared hits the stroke, Raven kicks out, Abyss shows up, press slams Sabu through a table. By the way, Cassidy went through a table, I didn't include that in the notes. <laughs> it was implied. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Hardy makes his big return, fucking brains Abyss with a chair. <laughs> yep. Hits a twist, twist of fate, hits a swanton on Jared, but Rhino breaks up the pin. Rhino gores Raven through a table in the corner for the win, which then left the announcers with the question, well, we knew Jared got a title shot if he won. But Rhino won, so what happens now? And then Jarrett was a little mad that he didn't get the pin. I actually like that finish. Yeah, and it, it plays... All, I, I kind of like the idea of Jarrett and Rhino not being associated very long. No, well, like, they they came in, like, with the, with an idea, but they're both clearly guys who are going to gun for the title themselves. Mm, so he, he... And he didn't, like, steal the win. It wasn't the case that, like, he screwed... No, he just won. Yeah, he, he didn't screw Jarrett, because Raven was going to DDT Jarrett through the table, and then Rhino gored him. That was the finish. So, like, he saved Jarrett technically, but he just won the match, because he's better than you, Jarrett. Yeah, and you know it. And, of course, the other big story, Jeff Hardy is back from his... Hard justice suspension. He, he served hard justice. And now he's back. He's about to make the same hack joke. <laughs> I'm the only hack around here. Uh, good main event. Uh, Stilly plunder. Chairs flying everywhere. 
big moves, table bumps, Cassidy Riley, Jeff Hardy coming out to burn. Like, Jeff Hardy, I think almost this is like the perfect way to deploy Jeff Hardy, as opposed to him like having deploy matches. Him. <laughs> yeah, when you have Jeff Hardy, you're like releasing him. You could be like, uh, we could put him in a wrestling match, or we can have him run out, get the pop, hit his three moves and leave. Yeah, perfect. He doesn't have to actually do any of the wrestling. He can climb a big red cage, <laughs> and that's all that matters. Oh, he brained homicide that night too. Perfect. He loves killing people with chairs and... The perfect return. <laughs> Jeff, another certified Sabu. Uh, Jeff Hardy, Shannon Moore, and Chris Canyon were backstage at the July 19th Impact taping. Management did, did not expect Jeff to be there, so they did not have a plan to integrate Jeff and Danny's storylines during the Impact taping. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's like the opposite of a no-show. Yeah, he sh and then they were like, all right, you want to interfere in the main event? <laughs> uh, Jeff's unexpected visit to Orlando may be attributed to Jeff trying to restore faith in his ability to show up on time and ready for work as a member of the TNA roster. He showed roster. up so, so much on time that it was before he was even meant to be there. Yeah, he's just like, oh, look, guys, I'm here. And they're like, that's not how it works, man. <laughs> That actually gives us like the opposite of faith in you. What are you doing? <laughs> like, you're... oh god, Willow the Wisp. <laughs> uh, Jeff Hardy. This was he was uh, this is from like an interview he gave. Will return under a mask as Willow the Wisp, but not wrestle on the show. The storyline is that Willow admits that Jeff has messed up. <laughs> Willow, and he's the good side of Hardy with a Mick Foley mankind kind of thing. Can you do the Willow voice? I'm a Willow. <laughs> Willow. Willow. It's so much fun to say Willow. <laughs> oh God, we won't have to actually suffer Willow until like 2013. But yep, he always wanted to do this fucking bit. Yeah, and I think he was sad he couldn't. Imagine being a star the level of Jeff Hardy and still being told no. <laughs> Yeah, the Jeff Hardy angle as Will of the Wisp won't be happening. Hardy suggested the idea and at first was under the impression it had been agreed to. But the booking committee is like, if we're going to bring you back as Jeff Hardy, because we want Jeff Hardy on TV, we want fucking Jeff Hardy. We don't want Willow. <laughs> No one wants Willow. Because like that that's the main reason they're bringing Jeff back, because obviously they're on Spike in a couple months, and Jeff does have name value, so they want Jeff around. Jeff, Rhino, Raven is a good like top three, then with your own guys too. Yeah, as like the mix of guys who have name value but can also work when in good condition. That could be said about all three of them, to be fair. I think Rhino's fine, maybe the other two. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Jeff will be. If, have you ever tried to book a TEW TNA game in like 06? It's impossible. <laughs> it's very true to life. I almost said my because I got very frustrated because I like it's the same. It's like Raven is like pissy and also like drugs, and then Jeff Hardy's also the same. And then you're like, well, ever, anybody ever like show up to work? And then you read all this stuff where it's like, oh wait, nobody did show up to work. So you know what? It's accurate. It is very true to form. <laughs> 